On a stormy November evening in 1971, a man calling himself Dan Cooper boarded a plane in Portland, Oregon. The weather was ominous, with dark clouds looming and rain pouring down, setting the stage for an unforgettable night. He was about to etch his name into the annals of criminal legend. The name Dan Cooper would soon become synonymous with one of the most audacious crimes in aviation history. Cooper, later misidentified as D.B. Cooper, executed a daring skyjacking that has baffled investigators for over five decades. The mystery surrounding his true identity and fate has captivated the public and law enforcement alike. His story is one of intrigue, daring, and unanswered questions. Despite numerous investigations and countless theories, the enigma of D.B. Cooper remains unsolved. Cooper was unassuming in appearance. He blended in seamlessly with the other passengers, giving no hint of the dramatic events that were about to unfold. He wore a business suit, a black tie, and sunglasses. His attire was typical for the era, making him appear like any other businessman traveling for work. He ordered a bourbon and soda, lit a cigarette, and settled into his seat. His calm demeanor belied the tension that would soon grip the flight, and passed a note to a flight attendant. The note was written in neat handwriting, and the flight attendant initially thought it was just another passenger request. The note contained a chilling message. He had a bomb, and he was hijacking the plane. The flight attendant's face turned pale as she realized the gravity of the situation, marking the beginning of a night that would go down in history. Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 305 was en route to Seattle, Washington. It was a routine flight with passengers settling in for the journey, unaware of the drama that was about to unfold. Suddenly, a man identifying himself as Dan Cooper handed a note to a flight attendant claiming he had a bomb. Cooper demanded $200,000 in cash and four parachutes, creating an atmosphere of tension and fear. He wanted the plane to land in Seattle, where he expected his demands to be met. The crew, under immense pressure, complied with his instructions. The authorities agreed to his demands, hoping to resolve the situation peacefully. Negotiators and emergency responders were on high alert, preparing for any possible outcome. After refueling in Seattle and receiving the money, Cooper allowed the passengers and some crew members to disembark. The relieved passengers exited the plane, grateful to be safe. He then instructed the remaining crew to fly towards Mexico City, maintaining control over the situation. The crew, though anxious, followed his orders. The plane, a Boeing 727, took off once more, now carrying Cooper and a skeleton crew. The tension in the air was palpable as they headed towards an uncertain destination. As the plane flew over the Pacific Northwest, Cooper instructed the crew to maintain a low altitude and slow speed. He had chosen a night flight, making it more difficult for authorities to track the plane. Somewhere between Seattle and Reno, Nevada, Cooper did the unthinkable. Wearing one of the parachutes, he lowered the aft stairs of the 727 and jumped into the darkness. It was a stormy night, with heavy rain and strong winds. Cooper vanished into the night sky, never to be seen again. Section 4, The Search Begins The FBI launched a massive manhunt, mobilizing all available resources to track down the elusive hijacker. They scoured the wilderness below the flight path, meticulously combing through the dense forests and rugged terrain. Agents interviewed witnesses and followed every lead, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. The authorities believed Cooper must have landed somewhere in the dense forests of the Pacific Northwest, an area known for its challenging landscape. Despite their exhaustive efforts, no conclusive evidence of his fate was ever found, leaving investigators frustrated and the public mystified. Some of the ransom money, however, was eventually recovered, providing a tantalizing clue. In 1980, a young boy named Brian Ingram discovered a bundle of decaying $20 bills on the banks of the Columbia River, sparking renewed interest in the case. The serial numbers on the bills matched those given to Cooper, confirming their origin. This discovery only deepened the mystery, raising more questions than answers, and keeping the legend of D.B. Cooper alive. Section 5. Whispers in the Wind, Theories and Speculation Over the years, countless theories have emerged about D.B. Cooper's true identity and his fate. Some believe he was a skilled skydiver who survived the jump. Others think he perished in the wilderness. Could he have been an experienced pilot or a paratrooper? Was he a cunning criminal mastermind or a desperate man seeking a way out? 
the lack of concrete evidence has allowed these theories to flourish, making the case a breeding ground for speculation and intrigue. Section 6. The Enduring Enigma of D.B. Cooper The mystery of D.B. Cooper continues to captivate the public imagination. It remains one of the most baffling unsolved cases in the FBI's history. The audacity of the crime, the lack of a clear resolution, and the enduring mystery surrounding Cooper himself have made this case a true enigma. Do you have a theory? Have you uncovered a piece of evidence that might break the case? The mystery of D.B. Cooper awaits your insight.